I'm Jonathan Kaplan. It's very nice to e-meet all of you. I'm a plastic surgeon out in San Francisco. And I wanted to kind of make it clear that, you know, what we talk about today, that it's not just about cosmetics. It's not just about medically necessary services. We actually have uh, surgery centers online with us today. We have podiatry centers. We have plastic surgeons. Uh, we have dermatologists. So really kind of every, I'm hoping everybody can get something out of this. It's not a, just about cosmetics versus medically necessary. It's basically anybody that provides outpatient services and is thinking about getting into social media, or even if you're not interested in social media, you're just looking to generate leads, you are in the right place. So as long as everybody can hear me, I'm going to go ahead and get started. I'm actually going to turn off my webcam so that uh, I can reduce any bandwidth because we're going to have a lot of video and a lot of things going on. So hopefully that won't, uh, I, don't, I don't want my mug messing up the uh, internet for us. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. Again, uh, hopefully if, as long as everybody can see, we're going to go ahead and get started here. I'm showing my screen and let's get going. So again, I'm Jonathan Kaplan, a plastic surgeon out in San Francisco. Thank you for joining me. And the first thing I really want to get clear to everybody is that social media isn't a popularity contest. I know that, you know, it's easy to get caught up in like, you know, how many followers do I have or am I growing my, uh, my following? And it's obviously important to stay engaged with your consumers, your followers and build it if you can, but it really isn't a popularity contest. Anybody can do it. I don't want you to think that, you know what, I'm not, uh, I don't have that X factor. I'm, you know, I don't know if I can do what everybody else does. Well, you don't have to do what everybody else does. You don't have to worry about having that X factor. You can just be you because believe it or not, what you do is interesting. You know, your you might think something is boring, but your floor is somebody else's ceiling. And so what social media really comes down to is it's about education. It's about engaging with your followers and educating them because it really is an extension of your website or your YouTube channel. Think about your website. If you just think about it for a second, you know, it's very well curated. It's these nice before and after photos. Uh, the, um, you have the descriptions of the procedures, but then even those descriptions maybe kind of read a little bit funny because your SEO person has written them in such a way that Google crawlers will understand what you're writing and it will, you know, hopefully notice that you have your city mentioned multiple times. So it'll help, help you in Google searches. So the thing is, it's just, it, your website's just too curated. And the thing is, if the consumer really wants to know what you're like, they're going to find that through social media because that's really where you are. That's where you are in your natural habitat. And it's just more raw. It's not these, like, again, really nicely curated videos or photos, but on social media, they get to see who you are. So you really need to think about this just as education, not about, you know, whether you dance in the operating room, whether you d dress up funny, you know, with costumes. If you want to do that, that's fine. But that's not what it's all about. It really is about education. The downside of social media is that it can be very passive from the consumer's perspective. So they can, you know, watch all this content you're putting out there. But what I want to teach you today is how to give them a reason to incentivize them to reach out to you to get information from you that they can't necessarily get through social media. What can we do on social media to drive them to your website ultimately or to contact your office? And so I wanna show you how to be proactive about generating leads and then in turn monetize those leads. That's where my expertise comes in. I'm not gonna teach you how to get 100,000 followers. I'm gonna teach you how to engage with the followers that you do have. And again, even if you're not looking at this from the social media perspective, I'm gonna show you how Anybody that interacts with your office or your facility, they should be able to, you should be able to get their contact information and generate a lead from it. So I understand that not everybody is in the same, uh, at the same level when it comes to social media. So I'm gonna give a quick primer on the social media platforms that are really providing unprecedented interactions with consumers. So I'm not gonna be talking about plain old Facebook. I'm not gonna be talking about Twitter. I'm gonna be talking about the ones you see on the left side of your screen. Snapchat, Instagram stories, uh, Facebook Live, and just plain old Instagram. So let's get started here. So uh, our agenda is we're going to go over some content creation tips on these platforms. We're going to show you how to create content once and repurpose everywhere. And we're going to help you convert followers into paying patients, which is the whole topic of this, of this webinar. And then, of course, we'll get to testimonials from Dr. Miami and Real Smile Doctor. So let's see here. Um, first off, content creation. So 
when it comes to these different social media platforms, we're gonna, we're gonna focus on Snapchat and Instagram stories first. So on this next screen, I'm gonna show you a lot of video from my Snapchat and Instagram stories, which by the way, Snapchat and Instagram stories are really the same thing. And what we are, are gonna do is don't focus so much on whether the videos are kind of staggered or there's buffering or something like that because the bandwidth, I just want you to see, just kind of take it all in. These are just three different examples of Snapchat and Instagram stories that I do. And what this is, it's 10 to 15 second video clips that we record throughout the day, just recording bits and pieces of our day. And then they all come together as a story. And after 24 hours, they disappear. The consumer can no longer see them after 24 hours. But don't get frustrated about the fact that they disappear. We'll get to that in a second. So I just want you to look at this. I'm on the left-hand side, I'm talking about preoperative breast augmentation. In the middle, we're talking about cool sculpting. And these filters that you see on our one of our employees, that's all done through the app. We're not having to sit down afterwards and you know post-production uh, post editing or anything. This is all done on the fly. And as complicated as it may or may not seem, this is all done really easily within the apps. So you can see me doing the operation on the left. You can see all these crazy filters in the middle. You can see captions on the right while I'm operating. Again, these are just 10 to 15 second clips that are pieced together throughout the day, just showing our day. So the point I'm making here is you don't have to have that X factor. You just have to have a smartphone at your office and you have to have something going on at your office. No matter how boring you think it is, as I said before, your floor is somebody else's ceiling. You've got something to offer them. So that's Instagram and that's Instagram stories and Snapchat. So moving on to Facebook Live, this is not fit 10 to 15 second video clips. This is truly streaming live. Here's an example of Real Smile Doctor. He likes to do all of his injectables on Facebook Live and consumers can actually ask questions while he's doing these procedures. And then we get to Instagram um, and kind of, I guess the good benchmark to go by is regardless, you know, however many followers you have, they say a good benchmark for engagement is that one to 2% of your followers are liking your posts every day. And so if you have 6,000 followers, then you should be having 60 to 120 likes per post. That's a good barometer of engagement. I don't know who made that up. That's kind of just the industry standard across fashion bloggers, across uh, medical services, people who are using social media for uh, multiple fields. That's kind of the benchmark everybody goes by. So what I wanna do is just give you some uh, ideas of content that you would use on your Instagram. So we're gonna go through my Instagram. This is my Instagram page. You can see uh, this is filmed a few weeks ago, so it's been updated since now, since then. But here's pretty standard, before and after photos, but that's kind of getting a little passe. Now we're getting more selfies from patients. The patients don't mind being on social media, so they'll take a selfie of their post-operative results, they'll send it to us and we'll post that as well. And this example, you know, I got about 71 likes, so that's pretty good. But what you're gonna find is as you start to post different things on social media, you're gonna find that what your audience likes is different than what my audience likes. What I found is that my audience likes photos of my dog and my wife. This got 159 likes. Uh, so they're definitely much more interested in my dog looking like she's drinking uh, a white Russian. Um, and then another example that patients really like is things that tend to be a little bit gruesome. This is a skin flap or abdominal skin taken from a patient I did a tummy tuck on. And she explicitly asked me to write happy birthday on the skin. So I wasn't being inappropriate or uh, doing something that would offend the patient. She asked for this and this got even more likes. Patients like specimens. I don't, I don't know what to tell you, but they like specimens. That's why Pimple Popper MD is so doing so well because she shows pimples being uh, burst with the uh, sebum coming out. So people like that. Uh, moving on to some other examples. Uh, my followers like scenes of the city of San Francisco. You may not live in something or a place that's a scenic, but anything attractive, scenic, nature, people like. And the coup de grace of what people really like on social media is videos, especially if it's videos of something they can't exactly tell what it is or it's something they've never seen before. And this is me doing a breast lift. So um, that's something people really like is video. And then another example of video is something called a boomerang. And I know this is a quick overview, but again, this is just a quick, is meant to be a quick overview. This is a boomerang. This is me elevating the skin flap on a tummy tuck. But just to be clear, I'm not going back and forth uh, just playing with the person's skin. It's a boomerang where you do it once and it just repeats that image over and over again. And a boomerang is something you can find on Instagram uh, within the app that they can show you how to do that. So again, none of this requires post-production editing. So 
Uh, moving on to some more examples. Uh, the thing that I found that my consume, my followers like the most is uh, photos of me and my wife, mostly of my wife. And then lastly, I just want to touch on, you know, patients, if they're doing uh, post-operative selfies, this patient took a pic, uh, had her husband take a photo of her from behind, that if you're posting photos, make sure you cover up butt cracks and nipples. And of course, I encourage everybody to use logos or watermarks on their photos so that people aren't stealing their content. So just a quick overview of some Instagram post ideas, and I haven't covered them exhaustively, but it's a good way. Uh, I wanted to talk about content creation. This is an example. So before and after photos, patient selfies are really kind of in right now. Photos of your spouse, pets or kids, specimens, scenery, video, boomerangs, and of course, when appropriate, watermarks and or logos. So moving on, one thing I wanna make very clear that's a difference, a critical distinction, is that Snapchat and Instagram stories are quasi live, meaning that they are not live in the sense that you can record that video and then that 10 to 15 second video clip, and then you can choose to upload it. So if you drop an implant on the floor on Snapchat or Instagram stories, nobody's gonna see that. Whereas Facebook Live, that's live live. That's really live, that's streaming live. So if you drop an implant on the floor, everybody is gonna see that. And then one critical similarity is that, you know, I talked about how after 24 hours, at least on Snapchat and Instagram stories, after 24 hours, these stories disappear. Well, that could be frustrating, but remember that you as the content creator, you can download your stories, you can download your Facebook Live video, and that's not lost forever. You can download that and you can keep it. The consumer can't do that. They can take screenshots, but they can't download the whole story. And that brings me to our second agenda topic, which is creating content once and repurposing everywhere. So let's say you start, you, uh, you're recording your video on Snapchat uh, or Instagram stories or Facebook Live. Well, um, what I do so I don't have to create it twice is I download my Snapchat story and then I upload it to Instagram stories. So now I've got my story on both of those platforms without having to record it twice. But even better than that, you can download these videos and then you can upload them to YouTube and they're there in perpetuity. You don't have to worry about losing it after 24 hours. The other thing you can do is if you write a blog post, and I tend to write two to three blog posts a week. Not everybody does that, I get that, uh, but you can insert those videos from YouTube into your blog post if it uh, co coincides with the topic of that blog post. And then you can repost that on LinkedIn, Facebook, uh, uh, Google+, Twitter, and then you can also use that video on the Build My Bod price estimator, which I'll get to in a second. I'll explain what that means. And then you can also take that video and uh, crop it down to a one minute or 60 second video. And you can actually use that as one of your Instagram videos. So you really can do this all once and just use that content for one day. You can use it for so many more additional days. And then third, how to convert the followers into paying patients, what we've all been waiting for. Well, this is the thing, this all kind of comes down to this one premise, is that whenever you post anything on social media or you put something on your website or you have a, a some digital uh, uh, advertising or you have a TV commercial, everybody eventually is gonna ask you how much this costs. It never fails. Think about how many people call your office asking how much things cost. So I'm gonna show you how to use that aspect of what consumers want, knowing, wanting to know how much it costs, how you can use that to your advantage, how you can leverage that into generating leads. So again, even if you're not doing social media, there's a way that you can leverage generating leads with consumers asking about cost. And anybody can do this. Not everybody can or wants to blog two or three times a week, but what I'm about to teach you, everybody can do, and you should be doing it. Because if you're putting on all this content on social media, that's not unreasonable for you to want something in return and lead generation is something that you should be wanting. So let's talk about on social media when somebody's asking you about uh, the cost of something. This is how not to answer these questions. So here's an example, doctor posts a, a photo of a mommy makeover and no sooner does he post that photo than Gail Pretty Lips is asking how much that costs. Now, I mean, that's, that's so you, she asks and you think, oh, it's polite, let's answer her and give her the price. This is the problem though. Once you tell her the price, you've kind of given it all away. You've given the milk away for free. Gail Pretty Lips doesn't really need to call your office anymore. She doesn't need to ask any questions because in her mind, that's all she really wanted to know. Now you could argue, well, I know she's Gail Pretty Lips. 
I can follow her to her Instagram page. But you don't want to do this. For one, it's stalking. And two, she really didn't give you permission to follow her on her page or to go asking questions like, you know, follow up and say, you know, a week later, hey, are you interested in coming in for a consultation? Because Gail Pretty Lips, when she asks a question on your Instagram page, she wants you to answer that question on your Instagram page. She doesn't want you coming to her page and asking her. Again, I can't stress this enough. This person did not give you permission, so you should not be following her. And if you just give her the price right up front, you've, again, given the milk away for free. You've lost any possibility of following up with her. Now, let me show you the right way to answer this question. And this is something that uh, Dr. Rich uh, Castellano, the real smile doctor, I showed you this video before. He knows the right way to answer this question. So let's go back to his Facebook Live video, even if it's a little staggered. I think I'll still get the point across to you. So he starts recording this video live and right in the middle, you'll see somebody ask, what does this cost? He gives them a link to go to his website. No sooner does he answer that, somebody else says, how much does this procedure cost? I'm in your hometown. He gives them a link again to go to his website. Does not just give the milk away for free. Again, somebody asks how much it costs in the same Facebook Live video. When they click on that link, it brings them to the price estimator on his website where they choose procedures they're interested in. But before you're actually shown the price, the consumer has to create a free account, put in their contact information, opt in, which is critical. They opt in to being followed up by the doctor. They submit their wish list and they get that pricing information and the doctor gets their contact information. Let me show you this a little bit more thoroughly. This is my website. Consumer comes to my website. They see a pricing tab or a get a quote now button. They click on that and they too are brought to the price estimator on my website. But this is these are procedures specific to my practice. They can look at injectables, procedures. They can switch between male and female. This is the page I would send them to if somebody was asking about pricing on social media. They get to this page. They can drill down into different procedures. They can read about it. They can watch this video that I recorded on Snapchat and then uploaded to YouTube. So this is how you can continue to use your social media content. They don't have to be redirected to YouTube. They can look at before and after photos and eventually they wanna know how much it costs. So they add it to their wish list. They don't see the price up front. When they submit the wish list, they have to create a free account. And this is where we capture all their contact information. And most critically, they opt in for us to follow up with them. They hit submit. They see all the pricing information automatically downloaded onto the screen for them. They can schedule a consultation through the price estimator that's in their website, and they can even get financing with care credit. This price estimator can be embedded into your website by your web developer with one line of code. Let me repeat that. You don't have to revamp your whole website for this. You just add a pricing tab. You add a get a quote now button to the home page. You put this, you have your web developer put this one line of code in, and then people can check your pricing right here on the website. Um, and then in addition to that, you know, the great thing about this is the office staff didn't have to run around looking for, uh, you know, tabulating the pricing. They got it automatically. And now that social media follower has a name, email address, and phone number. Additionally, in addition to seeing the pricing on the screen, an email is automatically generated where the office staff and the consumer both get this same email. This is a real email I'm showing you an example of. And that email shows the patient's name, the patient's email address, the patient's phone number, it customizes it with your office logo, and it shows the, the procedures they're interested in and the estimated cost. So that's a great way to engage with them. You've got their contact information, but don't just stop there. You want to re-engage with them. So let's take a look at that email again. In that same email I just showed you, there's a link to bring them back to your website so they can see a promotional video. There's also a link where they can look at a video specific to the procedure they're curious about. In this example, they're looking at lip augmentation with fillers. So they can click on that link and be brought back to the video on your website that you created with your social media. Um, but even cooler is if it's a non-surgical service, there's a link to bring them back to your website to actually purchase this online. So not only are we turning your website into a lead generation platform with this one widget, but we're also making an e-commerce platform. So let's click on one of these links, brings them back to that specific procedure. Here's a deep link they can share with a friend. And then they can look at this video that again, I created on my social media that I'm repurposing here. They can look at before and after photos. They can see that I use a blunt cannula and a dental block for my lip augmentation. And eventually they may wanna purchase this. So they'll click on it, they'll log in just the same way they did before. And then they'll go to check out and purchase this. And then they can purchase this within your website, within this widget, within the price estimator, without having to be redirected to PayPal. 
So pretty cool. So really quickly, let's review. How did we get, uh, how many different leads did we get? We generated a lead when the patient submitted a wish list to check pricing. We generated a lead when the patient decides they want to schedule a consultation after checking pricing. We generate a lead and dollars when a patient makes an online purchase. And what's even cooler is that if somebody adds an item to purchase to their cart, but then they don't buy it, well, just like Amazon, they'll get an abandoned cart email saying, hey, you forgot something in your cart, click on this link to come back and buy it. Well, even if they don't buy it, that's okay, because this same email goes to your office staff who now can see the patient's name, the patient's email address, and the patient's phone number, another lead for follow-up. So wherever, however you're getting people to your website, whether it's social media, digital advertising, or just Google searches, the point being is that they're coming to your site, they all want to know price, and you're giving it to them, but you're getting something in return. You may say that, well, by the time they come in for a consult, you know, they're ready to book no matter what. It doesn't matter whether they're price aware or not. Well, we did a study, a published peer-reviewed study, that we found that patients who are price aware booked 62% of the time. Patients that came in for a consultation that were not price aware, they only booked 44% of the time. So if you do the math, price aware patients are 41% more likely to book a procedure than non-price aware patients. So you're wasting your time a lot less. You're converting more patients going from the exam room to the operating room less futile consultations, less patients are experiencing sticker shock. I mean, that, there's no better way to spend your day than patients who are interested and ready to go and know their financial obligation. So to really drive home this point about social media and people asking questions, this is a real patient I wanna to talk to you about. This is my post on Instagram, and I posted this breast augmentation a procedure, a video, and some before and after photos. And right here, as soon as I post it, this person whose name I'm obscuring, they explicitly asked, how much would that run? If I gave them the price right there off the bat, giving the milk away for free, I never hear from them again. But instead we said, now you could argue again, I could just go to her Instagram page and follow her there and ask her a question there. Again, I think I've made it clear why you shouldn't do that. So what we did, by the way, this is that same patient, uh, this patient and this patient are the same person. This isn't just some amalgam of examples. This is one person that I'm following here. We told them to go to our website to check pricing after she asked. And sure enough, this is that same person. She, uh, we got her name. She submitted a wish list for a Brazilian butt lift. She uh, gave us her email address. We got her phone number and we were able to contact her, follow up with her, start the conversation. And then four months later, this is that patient getting a Brazilian butt lift. So the point being is that, you know, we, she wasn't ready to come in and get operation, an operation that day. It took four months, but we at least got her contact information at the top of the sales funnel when she was just starting to do her research. We were able to continue to talk to her, nurture her through that sales funnel. And when she was ready to pull the trigger, she came to the people who had been educating her that whole time. And so we captured her contact information early and then we uh, converted her after four, uh, four months. Now, the moral of the story is don't give away the milk for free capture all of your social media followers contact info with the price estimator and keep them engaged and when i talk about engagement look at this stat that we found that when we saw when consumers were submitting three or more wish lists they did so on average 41 days apart so these people are thinking about this for a long time that's nothing new but the thing that's cool about it is they're staying engaged with us. They keep coming back and submitting more wish lists. I don't know if they're checking to see if the prices have changed. I don't know if they're, you know, just enjoy playing with the price estimator, which I've definitely heard that from patients. But they were submitting wish lists on average 41 days apart. Some submitted them as quickly as 10 seconds apart, and some of them submitted them as, as long as 3.6 years apart. Now, obviously, we hope there's not that much lead time with all of our patients but it's not a quick decision. And this is a great way of using the price estimator to keep them engaged. If you're thinking, oh, well, patients don't feel like filling out a form. They don't wanna provide their contact information. It's a hassle, not true. Here's a five-star Yelp review. Person explicitly mentioned how much they like the price estimator. Another five-star review where they explicitly mentioned how much they like the price estimator on our website. So moving on. I've really only focused on the price estimator widget that we put into your own existing website as a way to generate leads through Build My Bod. But actually, there's three channels that you can use. So again, there's the price estimator on your website. You have a get a quote now button at the top so people can find the price estimator from your homepage. They submit a wish list that way. There's also the iPhone app that this is really best used at the front office by the front office staff. So when a customer calls, 
you don't want to say, and they ask about pricing, you don't want to say, oh, go check pricing on our website. That's terrible customer service. So what we uh, do instead of sending them to the website, we pull out our iPhone app, the Build My Bot iPhone app, and this is these examples are spinal procedures because we actually, you know, we do have surgery centers, non-cosmetic uh, practitioners that utilize our our platform. So you can ask the patient what they're interested in, get their name, email address, and phone number. They submit the wish list, and there you go. They get uh, their they get an email with the uh, price, and you get their contact information. And then the third way is BuildMyBot.com. So Obviously, the price estimator on your website only shows your pricing. On buildmybod.com, this shows all the doctors in the BuildMyBod network. Now, let me uh, stick with me here why this is important. So let's take a look at Dr. Miami. We'll hear from him later. He's got over 731,000 followers on this Instagram page. He's also got like half a million on another Instagram page. He's got over a million followers on Snapchat. So in total, he's got like 2 million followers across all of his social media channels. And once per week, Dr. Miami posts this on all of those social media channels, the buildmybod.com slash Dr. Miami link. And he asks his followers, what's on your wish list for your body? So they follow that link and they go to his profile page on buildmybod.com. They see his picture. They see a, a description of him. They see where he's located and they see all the procedures that he offers. Just like you've seen before, they add it to their wish list. They submit the wish list. He gets a lead out of it. They get pricing information and he gets thousands. He does this once per week that he puts it on all of his social media. You'll see it if you go look at it now. But he gets thousands of leads per week. Now you're thinking, well, I don't have two million followers. That's great for Dr. Miami. He's getting thousands of leads per week. But what about me? Well, this absolutely benefits you too, because when he's pushing 2 million of his followers to buildmybod.com slash Dr. Miami, they, yes, a lot of them submit wish lists for him, but what they're gonna quickly realize is that, okay, I'm not in Miami. Oh, wow, there's other doctors on this Build My Bod network that are near me. And so they can see all those other doctors in the Build My Bod network, and then they can submit a wish list for those doctors. And that's how this benefits you, because you get, all of those consumers that are having all this traffic going to the website, they see that you're near them, they submit a wish list for you. So it absolutely benefits you this third channel. So now you're getting wish lists from the people calling you, checking pricing, you get their contact info, you're getting wish lists and leads through your own website, and you're getting wish lists and leads through buildmybod.com. And this really gives you an opportunity to own your sales funnel. I'm not promising you all these leads are going to come in and book, you know, it, within within a day or within 3.6 years. I don't know, but I do know that these are not fake people. These aren't robots that are just submitting wish lists. These are all real people submitting wish lists to check pricing for the services you have. So those are genuine leads. And what's great about it is that you know, right now on your website, you know, maybe you have a book online tab or something, you know, that, that really shows the person's ready to commit and come in. That's great. You've got somebody at the bottom of the sales funnel. And so they'll come in. But what about everybody else in that sales funnel? And I don't care where you are at the top, starting your research or at the bottom, ready to pull the trigger to do a procedure. Everybody within the sales funnel, they all want to know how much it costs and a get a quote now button on your homepage or on your social media page, directing people to your website to check pricing, that is the call to action to end all call to action buttons. Because what it comes down to is that, I'm not saying that pricing is the only pain point, but it is the ultimate pain point. I don't care how board certified you are, if the patient can't afford it, they're not getting it. So why have them come in for a consultation and divulge their deepest, darkest insecurities only to find that they can't afford it? It makes no sense. And my feeling is, if you're going to put all this effort into marketing and advertising and social media, you need to be more pro proactive about getting something in return and get it, doing a get a quote now button, getting people to provide their contact information for pricing is a no brainer, in my opinion. Just to drive it home a little bit more thoroughly, you know, if you have some lead generation, you know, they're coming in little by little and maybe eventually they'll go through the funnel and eventually they'll come out the other end as a procedure. But that's a lot of time and effort for very little uh, feedback. But when you add a price estimator, you get lead generation on steroids where the leads are just pouring in. I'm not saying they're all gonna come through at the bottom as a procedure, but you're obviously increasing your chances that they will when you have more leads because it's clearly a numbers game. So what do you do with all those leads? First off, you can email marketing, 
Build My Bot Health, we offer, uh, we send out a monthly email newsletter for you. Uh, the setup fee for your template is $750. If you want to do the monthly email newsletters, it's $350 a month. But we can sync all of your email. The part that is free is that we can sync all of your emails into whatever email marketing database you have, whether it's Campaign Monitor, Constant Contact, MailChimp, whatever, Infusionsoft. We can uh, automatically sync all that for you. And then if you do want to add on this package, we can send out email month monthly email marketing for you, which is very effective. And then of course, you've got permission to follow up with all those people. So you should follow, uh, uh, make those follow up phone calls uh, to get as many of those people to come in for a consultation as possible. So I'd be remiss if I didn't mention building your audience with social media. I can't, I can't promise to get you a hundred thousand, but things that you can do to really definitely help it along. This is my new homepage, my website. We make it very clear that I'm big into social media. We played this video. They can see me on Snapchat. We uh, include my, my uh, handle on there for uh, Snapchat and Instagram. We just make it very clear. I'm going fast through this video. But, uh, but basically, rather than just putting your social media buttons at the bottom of your website when nobody can see it, we make it explicitly clear with a video like this that they can check our, uh, they can watch what I do in my natural habitat on social media. And uh, so promote it everywhere, your website, advertising, wherever. And then, of course, content begets content and it generates you more followers. And of course, the Build My Bot Health Dr. Miami collaboration, the more people that are seeing that are being driven to the buildmybot.com, the more people that are seeing that you're local in their area, they're submitting a wish list for you. You're making it clear to them that you are on social media. But even if you're not on social media, you're still making it clear that that you have pricing available. They're able to check your pricing and then you and uh, they're able to check pricing and you obviously get a lead out of it. So it's pretty awesome. Okay, moving on. Um, so you got to get some employee buy-in. All employees must participate. Uh, you can't do this by yourself. We actually even made it part of our interview process where we asked uh, this girl who was interviewing to do something on social media and she came up with the idea of juggling implants on, on here. So that's what she did. Uh, but this has been uh, really a great way to find the right employees. But it has been excellent. So now it's time for testimonials. And I'll get to everybody's questions. I see them all on my dashboard. I will definitely answer those questions. But let's get to our testimonials. We've kept our, uh, our special guest waiting long enough. The first one is Rich Castellano. He's going to grace us with his webcam presence. Uh, he's a facial plastic surgeon in Tampa Bay, in the Tampa Bay area. Uh, he's also going to be the guy that's going to teach you how to handle all of those new leads you're getting from the Build My Bod platform. Uh, he runs a masterclass called Pro PracticeProfitabilityMD.com. Uh, you can contact him at Dr. Rich at PracticeProfitabilityMD.com, and uh, he'll even offer you a free coaching call ahead of time with the real smile doctor himself. So if Rich is here, then I would be happy for him to appear. Hello, can you hear me, Jonathan? Can you I hear can me? I can hear you great. Uh, hopefully, every uh, if anybody else can hear Rich, please raise your hand. I see myself on video, so I think I'm coming through. If you Excellent. can verify that I'm on video, I think we're on. I think we're good. Excellent. Okay, very good. So thanks for having me on, Jonathan, and uh, enjoyed listening to what you presented. So just to share with you, I am a facial plastic surgeon in Tampa, Florida, and I've got a busy facelifting practice. I'm about 50-50, 50% surgery, 50% fillers, and non-surgical. And I've been using the Build My Bod since about last October. So we've since that time, we've generated over 160 unique leads. That's with phone numbers. That's with emails. And we're bringing in thousands of dollars. So it's definitely converting for me. Now, every practice's lead generation is going to be a little bit different. So whatever you're doing for your lead gen, if you don't have something like Build My Bod, just like you say, he said, they all ask for the price. What's the price? It, Build My Bod is something sticky, gives them something to play with so that they can engage. And so I do my marketing. I do a lot of seminars. I've got, I post a lot of videos on uh, YouTube, on Periscope, and on Facebook. And I do, I'm a fan of paid promotion on Facebook. So my Facebook videos get hundreds of thousands of views, and it's like my own little local reality show. So in my area, my practice is busier than it's ever been. Uh, I generate over $3 million in cosmetic revenue. I'm the only provider. I don't accept any insurance. So uh, there's always someone who does more, someone who does less, but for my practice, this is perfect, and I think for any practice that it just gives a place for your leads to go, and you can systematically 
uh, attend to them and, and serve them. So one of the things that Jonathan mentioned too is that if you're going to use something like this, you should absolutely drive your leads. And then once you get the leads, do you have a system in place to process them, to follow up? Do you have a good script in place? You need great sales management. So that's a big part of it, but it's definitely a great tool. I have loved working with Jonathan. That guy is such a hard worker and the customer service and support was awesome. I would get emails back on questions I had. I'm like, that was fast. So uh, the support has been there. He's a great guy. And since I've been using it for three months, I've already gotten my value back many, many times over. So I'm, I purchased on for the year plan. Best investment I made for my social media uh, managing my lead. So I'm definitely a believer and I would encourage you to sign up and you just you just have to try it. If you're not doing it, you have no idea what it can bring to you. And the beauty of what I found is that it is much more common that patients, now that I'm using Build My Bot, patients will call up and say, I got the price, I saw your videos, I want a book, when can I schedule? And it's like they're just tied up in a nice bow. So I really appreciate that, Jonathan. Thank you very much. It's been a great tool. Um, and the last thing I'll say before I wrap up, because I know you got things to, to talk about, is if you need help making your videos a little spicier, making your videos, how do you start from scratch, right? We had an article in Modern Aesthetics this month. Just get started. It's a, it's a primer for people who are looking to get into the game. And he's right. It's all about the videos. But what can you do to make the video a little bit more engaging? And I've certainly been inspired by Dr. Miami. He's a role model for me, and he's doing a lot of amazing things. And we're all going to do it in our own ways. So if you need help with that, please reach out to me. Love to help you with the coaching call. I guarantee I will find blind spots in your practice, whether it's marketing, whether it's sales management, or even just uh, branding in general, or patient and staff experience. So Jonathan, are there any other questions I can answer about my experience with Build My Bod? No, that was great. I really appreciate it. That was very succinct and uh, always a dynamic speaker. I appreciate it. So again, it's Dr. Rich, Practice Profitability MD. You can reach him at Dr. Rich. Actually, his email is on the screen still, Dr. Rich at practiceprofitabilitymd.com or just contact me directly. I'll be happy to connect you with him. Thanks so much for your time, Rich. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much. All righty. So I've got Dr. Miami in the, on the screen and it's pretty funny that I think he was, he was very much available. And, and then I think he had to take a phone call, but, um, so let's see if he's, uh, if he's available, he can, uh, he's, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll give him a second. No problem. He's, uh, so if you don't know Dr. Miami, he's obviously very busy. And one of the funny things about it is that since he doesn't have a whole lot of time to exercise, he gets on a, a an elliptical or a cycle in between cases to keep his, uh, keep his cardio going. And that's Rosie Sion. She's the uh, CEO of the practice. Um, so that when you're as busy as Dr. Miami, not only do you have an office manager, but you also have a CEO and that's Rosie. And so if you're ever looking to go and visit Dr. Miami and see how he does things, she would be the one who would kind of, she and Rob Schumann, who's his right-hand man as well. Uh, they would both help you with getting uh, connected and going to visit his office and see him. There's Rob. Hey, Rob. <laughs> so, uh, so as soon as the, Dr. Miami's done with his phone call and he uh, goes off mute, uh, we can hear him and he can give you his perspective. Um, they're still on mute, I believe. There's a little uh, red button, the microphone up top, if it's red probably for you, if you put it on green, it, you will be able to hear you. How about now? Oh, perfect, there now? you go. Yep, we can hear you great. All right, super. All right, it's not echoing or anything? No. Okay. Sounds All good right, from cool. my end. All right, great. So, um, yeah, I mean, uh, social media is where it's at. You know, it, it, uh, it changed our lives, changed our lives <laughs> forever in more, in more than one way. But most importantly, in, in terms of the practice and in terms of being able to not just generate leads, but to generate like connections, real connections with patients and your audience and your potential patients in the market and to the point where people when they come in for consultations it's not just it's not just that they're coming in they're coming in to meet a person they feel they already know so the closing rate is, is way 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 higher than any other form of marketing you could possibly do um, or even just like uh, you know television commercials ads blogs radio show whatever it is and we tried it all um, nothing even comes close to social media 
Um, and the more you invest in your social media, the more you, the more work you put in, the more return you get on it. Um, so it's not something you, you can't really outsource it that much. You still have to be on the actual social media every day or every other day. You need to um, be able to interact with the, with the audience. Um, now, the bigger your social media gets, the more leads you're going to have and the more you're going to need a system like, uh, like, um, like we talked about earlier, a system to make to, – to, it's like the social media will make it rain, but you need to have buckets to catch the rain. Mm -hmm. um, and that's where Build My Bod comes in because, you know, if you have 10,000 people watching your Instagram or your social media, when they decide they want to get more information, a website is really not, not the place you want to have them wandering around. You want to cut to the chase and have them give you their contact information, be able to imagine and, and sort of ring themselves up at the cash register with Build My Bod. And then uh, it, it's like it starts the process moving very quickly. You don't need um, you don't you don't you don't need any any. There's no what's the word? There's no like steps in between. You just, yeah. you just, you it's just a go good, for it. It's a good way to I guess like triage, the, it gets, triage the lead and too. it gets the ball rolling from there and from the, like they're taking positive action toward to reach their goal. You know, they're it's a step mm -hmm. closer to actual surgery as opposed to just browsing. And plus it, you know, because of all the leads that we do get that, um, and the, mo the number one question, like you said, is pricing. That's what everybody wants to know. So it helps us a lot to just send them to one place where they could get that question answered. And then we could follow up with them and they already are kind of qualified because they know what the price is. They don't have to kind of tie up our phone lines asking that question. So it's very helpful to have that tool to give them that information because that's their number one question. Yeah. So that's that's how it helps us. But how it helps the patient is it's <laughs> no I'm, I'm saying from yeah, both perspectives. From, from a patient's perspective, they're taking it's like a step forward. It's not just gathering it's like it's not browsing. They're like shopping, you know, and they're used to it. Amazon and all the other things. Mm -hmm. People like to take care of themselves, you know, they like to do it themselves. And this kind of gives them that feeling that they're, they're taking a proactive step. From our Build My Bod gets about 3,000 leads a month. Uh, that's yeah, a lot. That's even up to 7,000 some months. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, the average is about 3,000 3, 3, yeah, leads a month. Sorry. That's a lot of leads. I mean, you know, for I'm in solo practice. That's way more leads than, than one surgeon can do. Yeah. Physically. Um, but it's a it's a way to allow them to check pricing without calling your office and asking exactly. each, it takes so much time if to all those, call if all those people calls. were calling our office, oh, yeah, if all we those people be able to answer them all, so it's very helpful. <laughs> yeah, no, you can't you can't possibly answer that many inquiries individually. Mm -hmm. um, right. Yeah. All I mean, right. I, I, you know, and 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 it's really it's brilliant to be to give out the prices um, because um, you know it 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 it's the number one question that people ask every single time. Mm -hmm. It's so true. Be proactive. Get, but not just you're not just giving out the prices for free. You're getting in exchange for their information. Exactly. You know, so you can follow up. All right. Well, thank y'all very much for your time. I know you're busy. I really appreciate both you and Dr. Castellano. Thank y'all so much and have a, enjoy the rest of your, what looks to be a very pretty day in Miami, unless that's a fake backdrop. <laughs> no, it's a real backdrop. <laughs> All right. Y'all, thank y'all so much. Y'all take care. care. Bye. 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 All righty. So thanks everybody. Uh, there's our questions, so we're not going to step away just yet. Um, Dr. Miami is going to get back to his operation. Uh, but uh, so I have several questions, so please don't leave just yet. The first question I have is um, how do you do the pricing model when you have a surgery, if you, if, if you have a surgery center and even if you don't have a surgery center? So I make it very easy for you. We actually have three different options. Once you log in to Build My Bod and you choose your, uh, you want to do pricing, it's uh, if you have um, your own operating room, you can bundle it all in one fee if you want. If you use a, a separate operating room, you can choose to do the pricing where you show your uh, your own surgeon's fee, and then you can break down the OR and anesthesia time, uh, the OR and anesthesia fees by time. And then some other people have it where there's just a flat fee for OR and anesthesia for a breast dog, or there's a flat fee for OR and anesthesia for 
some sort of like a, a, a knee arthroscopy or something like that. So we have different models, different options you can use to calculate your pricing. So you absolutely, if you have your own operating room, you use it. If you don't have your own operating room and that operating room, that surgery center charges you or charges the patient based on time, you can get a copy of that fee schedule of how much it costs for one hour, for two hours, for three hours. And you can incorporate that into the fee that the patient sees through your Build My Bod price estimator. So you absolutely can uh, show pricing that's accurate, that's still an estimate, an accurate estimate, even though that sounds like an oxymoron, it's not, that you can show pricing whether you have your own operating room or it's somebody else's operating room and you can uh, do those calculations. It's very accurate. We've definitely thought of that. It's not a problem. We have doctors that are using this that have their own operating room that don't have their own operating room. We have uh, uh, major medical facilities that use this. The Cleveland Clinic uses this and they all have, they all are able to find the, the fit best for them through our platform. Now, another question is, what if somebody's got a different body habitus and they don't fit? Well, you know what? That's just like with any kind of procedure. Somebody comes in, they want a mini tummy tuck, and they get there and they need a full tummy tuck. It's it's education. You're going to have to have that educational conversation, that conversation about reasonable expectations, whether you are using Build My Bot or not. So what I typically do is I overestimate my tummy tucks, for example, um, and and so that way, when uh, most people come in, they're probably going to actually be a little bit under that estimated cost because it's going to take less time. And so then they're thrilled. They get an estimate that's actually let they get a, uh, the price in the office that's actually less than the estimate they received online. So you absolutely can uh, to uh, can accommodate for that for people. Uh, again, it's all about education. This is just getting their contact information so that you can then start that conversation, that education on the phone before they come in. So that when they tell you they have a BMI of 30, I, I don't care if they submitted a wish list for a mini tummy tuck. You can explain to them that they're probably not a candidate for a, a mini tummy tuck because you, they've told you over the phone that they have a BMI of 30. But how did you get their contact information in the first place? Because they checked pricing. The other thing is, what if you do combination procedures? No problem. We actually have a huge default list of procedures. So for example, we have breast augmentation, we have tummy tuck, and then we also have mommy makeovers. So you can actually combine those procedures uh, using our default list, or you can make a customized procedure. I don't wanna scare off all the people that are, are not uh, doing cosmetic procedures. I know those are the examples I'm giving, but the questions I'm being asked right now for some cosmetic uh, folks. So I'm catering the, question, the answers to them. But you absolutely can have these combination procedures that gives the patient a little bit more accurate understanding of how much that combo procedure would be. And even if that default list, of, uh, that procedure isn't in our default list, you can just customize procedures. So you absolutely can do com combined procedures. You can definitely overestimate to capture as many people with their body habits as possible. But I've never once had somebody come in and say, you know, I'm 300 pounds. And Bill Mabod said if price was this for a mini tummy tuck, why can't I get a mini tummy tuck? No, uh, the, the consumers are much more sophisticated than that. Even if at times we don't think so, they get that. And it's just about education. So the um, uh, let's see, the next question is, um, so there is, a, this is absolutely being recorded. You'll get a link to where this recording is after the, um, after the, uh, the, uh, the webinar is over. And then if you have, a, and so that way you can show it to other people in your office staff, you can show the other decision makers in your uh, facility, but then also you can contact me um, if you have any other questions, you can contact me at jonathan at buildmybod.com. You can email me directly. You can, uh, I can set up and do a co follow-up coaching call. I can do a online demo for other people in your office staff. So don't be, hesitate, contact me. I'm happy to do this demo. I do it multiple times every week uh, and people quickly sign up uh, soon thereafter because I answer all their questions. But yes, there is also a recording of this. You can also, if you've, if you've heard enough and you believe in it and you see that this is a great way to build your email database and start being able to send out uh, email newsletters, then you can go to buildmybod.com slash providers and request an account. And if you do sign up today or within the next week for a uh, prepaid annual subscription, you'll get a free month. And then the other thing to keep in mind is that we've held over our 2017 subscription fees. We've held them over for the rest of the month of January. So over the next week, you can lock in your 2017 subscription fees um, before there's a 20% price increase because 
it's uh, relatively inexpensive, and uh, we do a lot for patients, a lot, a lot for providers. And so that's another question: is someone wants to know how much does this cost? So I mentioned that for emails, if you want to do the emails, that's an add-on. Uh, that's seven hundred fifty dollars setup fee, and it's three hundred fifty dollars a month for us to do your monthly email newsletters. That's an add-on to the base subscription, and the base subscription is set up like this. So we have primary care doctors on the call. We've got specialists on the call. We've got surgery centers and facilities on the call, multi, multi doctor facilities on the call. So I'm going to tell you how it's set up that if you're a primary care doctor, direct primary care, it's $99 a month. If you're a specialist like dermatology, plastic surgery, orthopedic surgery, OBGYN, then it's $149 per month. And if you're a multi doctor group or facility like an ASC, it's $299 per month. So $99. 149, 299. You don't get to choose which plan. The plan chooses you based on what you are, whether you're a primary care specialist or a multi-specialty group. Um, and then that 99, 149, or 299, if you prepay for six months, it's significantly discounted. And if you prepay for a year, it's even more discounted. And with the annual subscription, if you prepay for an annual subscription, you do get a free month. So that if we're talking about price transparency, obviously I need to be very price transparent about uh, the cost of this. So those are the fees for the base subscription. I talked to you about the fees associated with the the uh, email newsletter service, and then the other fee I want to mention to you is that if you do sell things online and people purchase it, there's a five percent take off of the top to cover our merchant services. So like as I showed you before, that if you have some if you choose to have something available for online purchase and somebody buys it then we take five percent off the cost of that and you don't even have to discount the service so it's not like a groupon where you have to discount it 50 percent or something crazy uh one thing i did also mention that i uh, forgot to mention is that those prices that i mentioned the 99 the 149 the 299 what do you get for that you get a listing on buildmybod.com you get a listing on the build my bod iphone app and you get the price estimator to put into your website. Now, this is what's really cool about it. The price estimator, I mentioned you can put it into your own website, but you can put it anywhere. You can put it on any website you want. You can actually put it on your desktop Facebook page, which we have doctors who do that. That same line of code can be put into, for example, uh, the American Society of Aesthetic Plastic Surgery, ASAPS. They have, we're doing a beta test right now where we have doctors on their website, on their profile pages. You know, they have all their members have their own profile page. And there's some doctors that we're working with that the Build My Bod price estimator is embedded into the profile page on the ASAP's website. So for example, if you have time for this, you go to surgery.org and on the right-hand side, surgery.org, you'll be able to see on the right-hand side where you can type in a name to find a doctor, type in the name Shatkin. He's one of the doctors that we're working with. S-H-A-T-K-I-N, Shatkin. You click on his name, you'll see two Shatkins, but only one of them is going to have a get a quote now button. You click on that and you can see the price estimator on his profile page of the ASAP site. And we're able to track the leads coming from that widget. We know that it's coming from the ASAP site as opposed to coming from the widget on your own website. I've even put my own widget on a Canadian medical tourism website. If you go to that Canadian website, you find me, you'll see my price estimator. So we're able to generate leads through the price estimator wherever you want to embed it. Now, I understand that not every website wants to embed your widget, but the point is that it's not limited. It's, it's everywhere. So I think that's all the questions I have for now. I want to thank everybody for being on the call. Again, if you want to sign up, go to buildmybod.com slash providers and get a free month with a prepaid annual subscription. Or if you want to just email me, get a follow-up call on the books, get a follow-up demo on the books for the rest of your team, you email me at jonathan at buildmybod.com. And then, of course, you can just show this recording to the rest of your staff. Again, you'll get a follow-up email with the link for the recording. So unless there's any other questions that I'm not seeing here. No, if we, we got everybody. Um, uh, oh, actually, somebody did ask, um, what do you recommend as responding to comments on social media? So this is a little off topic, but I, um, on social media, when it comes to uh, Instagram, and uh, for example, Instagram, if somebody says something rude after you post a picture on Instagram, you can actually delete their comment. So that's the way you handle that on Instagram. You just delete their comment, don't even answer it. The uh, other way, if you're talking about social media in the sense, I, I'm, Yelp is not, I don't think of that as social media, but when it comes to Yelp, 
I'm not telling you to listen to me on this because I know my opinion is completely different than everybody else, but I don't respond to any Yelp reviews on Yelp, whether they're good or bad, I don't respond because I, I you just can't, you, you're not going to win, in my opinion, on Yelp. I, now, if I do get a bad review on Yelp, I absolutely follow up with the patient offline and call them and talk to them and see if there's anything we can do. But on Yelp, you know, if, if you think that it violates some community standard and you want to flag it and email Yelp about it and see if they'll take it down, best of luck to you. I would definitely try to get every one of them taken down, whether there's merit to it or not, quite frankly. But I do not respond to any Yelp review online on Yelp. If it's a good review, I call the patient and thank them. If it's a bad review, I call the patient and encourage them to come in to see if there's a way we can fix it. But I don't get into a social media battle with anybody online because I just don't feel like you can win. So I think that is, yeah, that's all the questions. Thanks, everybody. I appreciate everybody's time. And uh, that'll do it. Y'all take care. And again, feel free to email me if you have any questions. Take care. Bye-bye.